Hi guys, today I'm going to go over Nagios Core. Nagios Core is a fantastic server monitoring tool. So after we work so, so hard setting up our servers and our network infrastructure and all our services just the way our end users need, the next most important thing is making sure they stay up, right? There's always going to be problems. There's always going to be server failure, hardware failure, services are going to die, disks are going to fill up, systems will be overutilized and sluggish, and we need to know when this happens. We don't want our end users being the one calling us and saying, you know what, this is having problems. It looks embarrassing for us, it looks embarrassing for our department. So be proactive, set up a server monitoring tool, and it will let you know in advance when something happens before the end user knows. Then you can go in there and start setting up. It makes you look good, it makes your department look good, everyone's happy. So set up Nagios Core, completely free product. So I'm gonna go over in this video how to set up Nagios Core server, and then I have a second video on how to set up a Windows and Linux client, and I'll put a link here, so you go ahead and link to that and watch that afterwards. So just go ahead and follow these step-by-step -step instruction on how to set up your server today. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Nagios website, nagios.com. They have tons of products on their website. I'm going to go look for Nagios Core. So if we just browse for a second, Nagios XI, Nagios Log Server, some fantastic products here I used in the past. But let's go ahead, let's skip over to our Nagios server. So I have already set up, set up a CentOS installation that we just need to start configuring to run our Nagios Core server. So let's start off by installing some of the prerequisite software. We're going to need a web services that supports PHP scripts. So we're going to go ahead and use the yum utility, yum install, httpd, and PHP. So we'll hit yes and say we accept the installation. Next, we're going to install some tools we need to compile source code. Nagios Core is an open source product. We're going to download the source code and compile it. It's very easy to do. We're going to just download GCC and some glib libraries to help us with the compilation of our code once we download it. Again, we just hit yes, wait for that install to complete, and then we'll go on and install some additional packages. Now we just install a couple more tools to be able to compile our code. We're going to install the GNU debugger and the good GNU debugger libraries as well using the slash dev. So we're install these so it's going to help us when we compile our source code. I believe these are actually completely required. So these um, what is it, five or six packages need to be installed before we go ahead and start downloading and compiling Nagios Core. So I went ahead and switched users to root and this is to allow us to run as super user privileges to do a few more commands. We're going to go ahead and create a Nagios group and a Nagios user. Now this is run, used to run the Nagios service. As a general security precaution, you don't want to run your services as root or as whatever the web server is running. It makes your system more vulnerable to attack. So having it separate is always a good idea no matter what service you're running. Now we're going to go ahead and add a nag command group. And we're going to do this to run our commands as this group. We're going to add Nagios to this group as well as Apache, which is the web service. So we're going to add both of these into our nag command group. Now I'm going to go ahead and make a Nagios folder and go into it. We're going to be downloading our source code now. The source code for Nagios Core is on SourceForge since it's an open source product. This site's commonly used for open source products. So Nagios 411 is the latest distribution, open source distribution there is. So let's go ahead and download our source code. You can download it from this website if you have a browser. If you don't have a browser, it's not a problem. You can use wget, and we're just going to provide it that same URL there in our wget command with the complete file name at the end there. So this is going to go ahead and download this file. After we do this, we're going to go ahead and uncompress it. We're also going to download the plugin. Now the Nagios plugin is great because it's a bundle of 50 plugins recommended by Nagios to get you started monitoring your systems and services and network devices. So the, some of the commonly used thing, commonly used features that a server needs monitor, it's going to go ahead and include that. So here we're going to do the wget and we're going to give it the same idea. We're going to give it a path to the plugin. Now there's actually over 4,000 plugins available. So any service you could possibly imagine that you need a plugin for has probably already been developed, remember, because this is an open source product. So if you go to exchange.nagios.org, you can go ahead and browse all the possible plugins that you can download. If you have any plugins that you use and really recommend, go ahead and leave it in the comments below so me and other users can actually take a look at what, you know, some people out there are actually loving. So we're going to go ahead and download this. It just take, it's a really fast download. So now we're going to go ahead and take a look at our files, and we're going to go ahead and extract it. 
So we should have two files in our Nagios folder, both are tar and zipped. Um, and we're going to use the tar command to go ahead and extract these files. Um, depending on your browser, it might have already uncompressed it, so you might not need that Z flag in there. But if you do, that's fine as well. You could try it either way, whichever works for you. So here's the source code that we're going to extract. Once we do that, we're going to go into the Nagios-1.1 got one folder and you notice it's source code it's the standard source code that you would see if you downloaded any open source product and if you notice there's a config file there that config file is very commonly seen it goes through your system and checks what configurations what libraries what compilers what make version make files you uh, make utility you have and we'll go ahead and set up all the system configuration and then make file and then when we compile our code with the make command, it's going to review the make file that this config file, this config utility script actually generated. So we're going to go ahead and use the flag with command group nag command. Um, if you do a dash dash help there, there's tons of options to configure this. So I'm just going with a very basic configuration here. But if you want it more customized, want to change the path, the user you know, who's it running as, where your web server path is, you can go ahead and take a look at the help there, slash dash dash help, and it'll give you a whole list of possible commands. So here at the end of the configuration, if it, everything is required that is there, all the prerequisites software that we already installed is there correctly, then it's going to go ahead and show you a summary of the configuration. Now you can take a quick look at this. After this, we're going to do the make command. The make command will look at a file called make file that was generated by this configuration utility. That make file will go ahead and make, start compiling our source code, the Nagios open source. So here it is, GCC is our C compiler, and it's going through and compiling our source code and making some nice binaries there. So once this is done, compiling, we could do a make install. The make install command will allow us to actually take what was compiled and put it into our actual system path, actual um, user local bin, user local Nagios path. So if you look here, I'll give you a short summary again and kind of give you instructions on the next step and some tips. So the make install, we'll go ahead and start putting all those things we just compiled into our system. And if you notice there, the default path is user local Nagios. So you can pretty much find all your configuration, all your sample files, everything you possibly need, all the binaries actually in that path. Now at the end of this, you notice here, if you take a quick view, there's actually some instructions on what to do next. So the make install init, so you go ahead and see, it created a script, a startup script. We're also gonna add this as a service in X init D as well in our client. So you'll see this a little later as well. You can add some sample files. The sample files are useful because they're going to help us actually get started with our clients. You definitely want to add these into our path. So you have for switches monitoring. So we're going to do the Windows and the Linux configuration. And we'll do that for the next video. So make sure you find the link for that. And we're going to go ahead and do a make install command, command mode. And you go ahead and see what it does. So it just goes through a number of different configurations, and this one is just doing a, a permission, checking on the permissions of a certain script. Once we do that, the next thing that's recommended to do is go ahead and modify a configuration file. So we'll start editing some of the configuration files that Nagios needs to run, and one of them is the one that actually has contacts. It's going to determine who's contacted when there's a problem. So, you know, if you don't want it to be you, don't put your email address here. Put the person you don't <laughs> like but honestly seriously you're going to want to put um your email address here or the person that should be responded uh, emailed um, if you guys have a lot of down issues and a lot of issues in your environment you know you might want to make a group that a lot of people are notified but you go ahead and you can add it here and you go ahead and put this your email address here or your generic email address that maybe goes to a help desk to open up a ticket so that's the idea here. So I'll probably make another video on how to do um, notification and contacts in Nagios. It's one of the best features is being notified on the fly is really one of the best features you could possibly have in any monitoring tool. So you need to be paged, well, text now, right? Text and or um, emailed, then this is where we configure it here. So we're gonna do some web configuration. You wanna make sure you do the make web config 
web config, make install web config. And this is going to add um, the directory uh, directory tag to your Apache configuration. I believe that's the way it's phrased. And this is going to add the directory slash nagios and specify the path. And specifically, we're also going to do the HT password and generate a password for the nagios admin. And this is going to be added to our web configuration. So if you ever did web passwords, HT passwords is uh, a utility that comes with Apache when you install HTTPD. So we're basically putting a password on our website. And that right there is how we went ahead and actually added the nagios, the slash nagios to our local host and define where the scripts and the web content is. You can actually go take a look at that file. Now, once we're done generating the password for our website with HT password, we're going to go ahead and restart our web service. So service.httpd restart is the general command used. If you're using a newer dish or different distribution, you might just have to use syscontrol and then restart and maybe HTTP D dot service as the command to restart it, depending on which distribution of Linux you're on. So once we're able to restart our service that's running on localhost, I didn't go through and actually completely configure a web server, but if you actually were in a production environment, yeah, I would go through and actually change your domain name correctly and put in a server name there. Now we go ahead and get started installing the recommended Nagios plugins. There are about 50 of them, but like I said, there's over 4,000 on the exchange Nagios. Dot org site, which is a fantastic site. So go definitely take a look when you have a second. Definitely go take a look at all the plugins and all the documentation on Nagios. It's a huge, huge um, forum. And then you can go ahead and add if you wanted to, if you're a developer. So we're going to go ahead and extract our plugin. Once we have it extracted, we're going to compile it very similar to how we compiled the Nagios open source um, code. So now we have the same configure um, utility script that will go through and set up our environment. It's going to make our make file. So we're going to use a few arguments here. We're going to specify the Nagios user and the Nagios group. So we're going to go through and it's going to go through the same thing the other one do is check which what software we have installed, what compiler, what path, what library. So a make file should now have been generated with this information and it's going to go through and use GCC to compile our code. Now, once that's done, we're going to do a make install, and it's going to add our plugin to our Nagios install that we already did. All right, so we're almost there. Now, all we have to do is a few more steps. One of the things we have to do is do a check config, and this adds the Nagios service to our run level, so the Linux run level, and it turns it on. So for certain run levels, which I believe is 3, 4, 5, it will go ahead and have Nagios start up on boot if the Linux distribution actually boots into that run level. After that, we can go ahead and verify our configuration. So we have a Nagios config file, which we'll be seeing more of when we set up the clients. But we're going to set up the initial one for localhost. So right when you install the Nagios server using the Nagios command with the minus V, we'll take a look at your Nagios config file. And as long as there's no syntax error or configuration issues, we'll go ahead and tell you everything looks good, gives you a little summary of what has been configured. And with this information, you can go ahead and verify that this is actually um, in line with what you actually have configured. So that's good to take a look at this summary. Once you do that, we're going to take a look at our service. So we're going to start up our Nagio service. If you restart the machine because we added it with check config to the system run levels, that it will start on boot. But since we haven't restarted our system yet, we're going to go ahead and do it manually, start up our Nagio service. And now the last thing we need to do is SE Linux. SE Linux is a security tool put out um, by Red Hat, but it also comes with CentOS. It's it's a security measure, and it's not a bad thing, but a lot of times it does prevent things from working. So it's common to disable it. If you do a get enforce, it will tell you if it's what it's running as. So there's enforcing, disabled, and permissive are the three options. So we could either disable it, you can modify the file in etc sysconfig sysse linux, or you can try doing um, the change con. 
command and it will go ahead and try to modify the permissions. So it's a good idea to have it running. It's a good security measure. If you know how to use it, a lot of times I use software where they do disable. It's just a recommended practice. Um, so it's really your personal preference if you want to leave it enabled or disabled. So once that's done, we can go ahead and go to our website. If you're on the same server, it's localhost slash Nagios. And here's the HT password we set Nagios admin and the HT password we set on the command line. And now we can take a look at our homepage, see um, the splash screen here. So a conference is coming up. That sounds like a lot of fun. I'm sure you meet a lot of great people, a lot of great information. I love going to conferences. You learn so much there. So I would highly recommend you attend the Nagios conference. It sounds like a lot of fun. Um, but the, by default, the local host is actually what's going to be monitored first. It's going to tell you how your system's doing it, and it's going to have some basic services. It detects that a web server is running. It kind of knows since it's the same Nagios server that you have to have a web service running. It does a ping. It checks users. It checks system load and memory. So these are some common things that all systems need monitored. So again, this is a fantastic product. Be sure to watch my next video on setting up the clients. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful. I hope you were able to set up Nagios Core in your environment. Fantastic product. Been using it for years. If this was too many steps for you, check out Nagios XI. It has way more functionality, tons of features. But of course, if your company can afford it, this is the great product to buy. So I would highly recommend that. Been both using Nagios Core and Nagios XI for a number of years. Highly recommend it to anyone that needs server monitoring. And honestly, who doesn't need server monitoring? Everyone does. So uh, I hope this was helpful. Give me a, uh, a thumbs up if you liked it or leave comments below to use Nagios Core or Nagios XI. I'd like to know how you guys use it. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.